Have I still got a panel? Nope. Has all my panel been sniped? So there's another poem. Oh, where's, where's everybody gone? <coughs> What happened to Chris? I'm here. Chris is still here. Is he? I think oh, he's still here. Oh, he's still here. Oh, still here. Sorry, he just had his screen sharing. I'm for an answer still. That's or a poem. If you, if fusion and diffusion causes your delusions about the vacuum of space. Oh, great. Here we go. Oh, your sound sucks. Hey, new guy, your sound is shagged. Then fourth. Right, talk about amongst yourselves. I'm going to take five. The show's not live temporarily. I don't know if you want to hold fire on what you're about to show, Chris. Then fourth, your sound is completely screwed. I need some lunch. <laughs> uh, can somebody else look at the back door for a Arwen, moment? Arwen, how are you, Arwen? I'm doing good. I'm just really annoyed. Really, really freaking annoyed yeah. that these two idiots, these arrogant, solipsistic, freaking morons that think they're like the most intelligent people out there, and yet they make the most retarded arguments ever. <laughs> Like gravity holds gas on the surface of a planet. Wow, Space I'm in an infinite vacuum. The, but it's even worse than that. He was basically declaring gas pressure doesn't push upwards. Come on, but, but come on. Like, seriously? Yeah, he's literally said that several times. It's just isn't that what gases do? They go up. Doesn't helium go up? It apparently goes only in five directions. Doesn't go upwards. <laughs> Oh, okay. Whatever that means. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live and a PayPal link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the discussion and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Alan, Arwin, Chris Monk, Mark Doxy, Sleeping Warrior, The Plain Truth, uh, No Globe, and that's about it. Good to have you all. Great to be uh, here. No, Good no, afternoon. No, no. What? Greetings. 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 All hail the Enlightenment. <laughs> Indeed. All hail Keck. All hail Bilu. Who joined no. Tin Tin yeah, Foils? Say that. Yeah, Bilu just called. He wants his seven six R back. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> seven six R asterisk. <laughs> R is redundant. 
So, any signs of curvature, anybody? Mm -mm. Yes, there's one on the screen right now. Other than the sun's <laughs> curvature? <coughs> Whoa. No? Anybody? Anybody? Nope. Nope. Uh, 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 uh. Axial rotation? Any signs of that? Anybody? Nope. Oh, wait, I, I got one. I got one for the actual rotation. Oh, okay. Again. Here we go. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know. Anybody find any evidence of fire in a vacuum that will actually burn or, or propulsion chemical, in a vacuum? Re chemi chemical reactions taking place in vacuum that are stable? In no, no. No, no signs of that. There's a lot of claimed... Nigger, uh, nigger, nigger, nigger. There's a lot of claimed uh, <laughs> stuff like that. Let's see if Pete gets it out of his system. Did, did you get that? Really? Got to turn yeah, off his you? camera. Well, he did do what I told him to. He, he's, he's just a dick. <laughs> he is just a dick at the moment. That, that, that he's welcome to stay. He was on the up. panel for ages. You know, he's welcome to stay. I don't know why wow. he, he behaves like that, but he's got a bit of a problem. I don't know what it is. A bit of a problem. So what have you got on your screen? I'm presenting you now, Chris. What what is this? Oh, I was reading through uh, some stuff about effusion and diffusion of gases into vacuum, right? So gases expand in all directions from high pressure to low pressure. So they attempt to fill the entire void of the entire infinite vacuum of space, no matter what you did with it, right? So the gravity so gravity and yeah. gravity in their claim would have to overtake all of the I'm, I am speaking, so hopefully Hello, we hear you. Good to have oh. you. Oh. Can't see your screen Thank name. You. A vacuum. Sticks James, good to have you. I was trying Thank to you. find the actual diffusion rate in the, space, in the vacuum of space because I think it's, I can't find it in this one, but I think it was around 50 kilometers per second the gas will try to escape into space. Faster than the thrust of pretty much anything. Makes sense, it's a vacuum, right? Well, yeah, it's an infinite vacuum, right? So the gas tries to get into the state of lower pressure at an incredible velocity. <coughs> I thought it was 50 kilometers per second, right? Which was faster than the escape velocity. Of... Mm. No, we don't hear you, thin four. Thin four. Okay, my microphone must be fucked. Perfect. But either way, it's effusion and diffusion is what you want to research if you're looking for the information on vacuum gas effusion and diffusion in the space cool. the rates Thanks, are hey nathan yes Thanks, i found Chris. some axial rotation okay <laughs> this should be good it's right here see <laughs> <laughs> <Love it. laughs> now we're talking specifically about the earth Yes, that's there's a lot of axial rotation there. A lot. Oh my. <laughs> oh. oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Is that rumpus? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching at uh, Cody's lab the other day there, and he took like, thermite in a vacuum chamber and couldn't get it to properly chemically react because there wasn't enough pressure in it to and cause coagulation in the actual reaction itself. Like pure thermite doesn't require any oxygen or anything. It's a self, it's just a chemical reaction type of compound. Right? Can anybody hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Well, we could be rule out Rumpus now. He just gave us a uh, demonstration of the uh, rotating axis. <laughs> Who is it that you spoke? Was that Thin Fourth or St Slick James? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it was, yeah, the other guy that was crackly in the break. I'll turn you up, my friend. Can you say something again? Thin, fourth? You know, it was Slick James that said something. I think his mic doesn't work. Oh, okay. It was Slick James yeah, that was quiet. Yeah, I thought somebody was talking to me. Thin, fourth. There we go. I've turned up Slick James as well. Thank you. Good stuff. Yeah, so apparently you need pressure, external pressure, in order to have any reaction at all in, in any gas, any medium or something to that effect. 
So I found that kind of fascinating. Yeah, to kind of pause a bit of uh, a salty taste in your mouth when you're talking about the sun, right? Well, yeah, I like the sun or plasma clouds and, you know, whatever. You know, galaxies, the whole nine yards, nebula. Got to be a source of pressure in order to have that, you know, coagulation into some sort of a form or shape or chemical reaction. Like you couldn't even, like you couldn't get thermite to react in a vacuum chamber. It's a combustible, one of the most powerful explosives, you know, on Earth. Right? Amazing. It wouldn't wouldn't react in a, a vacuum. Wouldn't react. Wouldn't react in a vacuum. No. Amazing. And then he took it out, and then, then he baked it on a spoon and baked it so it was actually almost like glass, where he baked it to make it hold together, so he forced it to be held together, and then put it back in the vacuum chamber, pulled a vacuum on it, and then hit it with a, a laser, and it would just sit there and smolder. It still wouldn't react in a vacuum. Because the problem is, as soon as the reaction type tries, tries to occur, right, as, as the elements try to explode, and the heat expands, it tries to, then it instantly just fills the vacuum, right? It just expands into the vacuum faster than the reaction can occur. Right, so how would a sun work or galaxies or all this other stuff? No pressure, no, 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 no pressure, no reaction, right? Right. Who said the sun What's was that? chemical reaction? Any proof of dust on the shell? <laughs> oh, I kind of want to do a shout out. Somebody shout else was trying to, to say something. I, th I don't know if it's slim. Somebody was trying to say something, but they were very quiet. No, maybe not. It's a mobile. Uh... Just mute. Well, anyway, I, I want to do a little shout out uh, to Wind James. He's a channel and he makes very funny videos, uh, mainly called Flat Earth Evolution. And uh, yeah, I really like him. It's very funny. Yeah. Yeah. So check it out, especially Flat Earth Evolution Memes 7. It's also 3 minutes and 33 seconds. Since so you've fits. mentioned 333, so this yeah. is this is show 333, right? Hey. hey slick I got a again. Phone call. Welcome back, Slick. Thank you. Thank you. So ah, is... I recognize your face now. Oh so uh, me? Yeah. Yeah, we, we talked in the, in the comment section. Welcome to the panel. Yes, yes, okay. Thank you. I've been trying to get on for some time now, but I'm finally got there. Thank you. Uh, no worries. Story of my life. So this is show uh three 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 live. So flat earth debate three 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 live. But the number of subscribers by pure coincidence is six thousand six hundred and sixty six. While I'm Shut running, <laughs> while I'm running, show three three three. Amazing. Oh, I'm loving that six six six. All hail the enlightenment. <laughs> what a weird coincidence, though. Three 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 show with six 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 subscribers. <laughs> Couldn't plan it. Hey, Slick, are you a Freemason? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you on my what? Are you a Freemason? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> All right, there's all these these numbers here, man. These numbers are good. <laughs> Someone has to be responsible for this madness. Yeah, I'm not sure. I could be responsible, but I can't guarantee that. <laughs> nice. So you, you announced that at 1109. Yeah, that's interesting too. <laughs> that is very suspicious. You, very. You suspicious. know, it's funny you mention those numbers because they also. So correlate to the numbers of degrees in chord formulations in musical chords. They use one threes, five sevens, elevens, and thirteens. Hmm. It's funny. Yeah, it's all meaningless in regards to this channel. Nothing but coincidence doesn't mean anything. By the end of the show, I'll have either gained a couple or lost a couple of subs. Anyway. No so. no flat yeah. We've planned this from the start. Mm-hmm. Subconsciously. 
no. It, it was all leading like, up to this, was it, Arwen? Oh, Having 6,666 yes. subs whilst running show 333. It's all been leading to this. This is the day. This is the day. <laughs> this is the day die. I cast my spell. <laughs> <laughs> Your day spell? <sighs> I think I think the law of I I think the law of averages say that every number has to come up at some point or it just wouldn't exist. They're all even. I guess that ties into the verse in the Bible that says be careful not to find meaning where there isn't any. Yeah, if, if you take a number, if you take all numbers from one to a thousand, every last one of them have an equal chance of coming up at some point. And I think what somebody did was pick a certain number and apply something to it. So that brings attention to that particular number. But that number is no different than any other number. Three, mm-hmm. five, seven, 192, they're all the same. But just wow. no one thinks, no one thinks about those other numbers. Well, it depends. I mean, if if if, if you literally entirely like, correct. plot them out individually, there's uh-huh. symmetry found in these numbers as well. If you subdivide them, yeah, there's sure. all kinds of way to interpret numbers, but there are uh, certain patterns that will occur. Sure, like, yeah. it's yeah. just algorithmic. Algo- algorithmically, thirty-three is a very special number. Sure. Exactly. So it's 37. But my point, I think the point that I'm making is if you just take the numbers one through a thousand and forget about algorithms or anything like that, every last one of those numbers have an equal uh, opportunity to show up at any time. No one of those numbers can, has a chance to show up more than any other. I, I would agree with you. With, you know, yeah. And if there's a thousand news events every single day, then you're bound to see some sort of pattern, but you can't read anything into it, can you? Exactly. The question and what is, has happened, go ahead. The question is, do these things happen? Like, you know, suppose like these things that are occurring right now, we, we, we view them as coincidences and then we're, we're just trying to explain it away, but it only seems well, to be happening in this way, you know? Things always seem to fall in line in certain and certain patterns that are that are repetitive. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree I, with that. That's why I said algorithmically there is a certain pattern. And See, I agree with that. The Freemasons dove deep into that from from within the occult, and they just uh, appointed certain meanings, certain frequencies, you could call it, to exactly. certain types of numbers. Right, because just like take the six 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 thing. It is just as e- it is just as easy to appoint something positive as it is to appoint something negative. So it's just all in the appointment and who it all made depends the appointment on the angle. for what reason. It depends on the angle. Uh, six 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 mostly stands for materialism, and it is uh, the carbon atom, practically. Right, but it's. But see, it, it could so, be the carbon. But see, now notice that those things are physical and also a foundation of life itself. And yeah, you can get, get all very philosophical about it. But see, okay. the point that I'm making is that those things are assigned to that number. That number didn't assign itself to them. Somebody else did. So it's all up to who did the assigning. See, so if somebody assigns evil to something and we all believe that, then that just simply means we are believing the assign. That doesn't mean yeah, that But then the you place it, it's not an assign, an assignment. <laughs> it's an assumption. It is a, a context, a, an angle of approach. But things are assigned, basically. All these things are pre-designed by the creator as they have been pre-designed. You, yeah, the creator assigned the carbon atom to be 666. Why did the creator give AIDS to babies in Africa? Oh, I don't think oh, that the creator did on, that. I think really? that I think that uh, biological weapon designers did I was going to say, have you got any evidence that the creator did give uh, AIDS to anybody? Because from my understanding, it's a man-made virus. Exactly. Fabricated. And your evidence for that is? <sighs> Look it up, ignorance. <laughs> but see, think about this. 
who, who think about this, who is to say what numbers the creator assigned to anything? See, somebody has to determine that. But no, the creator assigned, never. No, but it is no, part of the no, no, let, let me finish. Let me finish. The creator never reached down and screamed to the whole world what 666 meant. See, so somebody had to decide that the creator decided what that meant. He, I never heard a voice come out of the sky that said what it meant from the creator. I never heard the creator speak. So who yeah. can define what the creator says if you never heard him speak? And we're, we're assuming that the creator goes by a deanery number in the first place, don't we? Yeah, but, the hey, creator, yeah, but the creator doesn't yeah, speak. The creator mm -hmm. doesn't speak as person well maybe he did as christ he no he speaks no, through no, no, no. his creation the creation speaks for people. itself even today so to some where... people god talks to them audibly yeah but that's 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 a different approach you can hear his voice literally i'm pretty sure yeah. that the um... yeah okay but yeah that that can be different things Owen, and it is up to voice. the individual to interpret Owen, you hearing what voices? I said. Are you hearing voices? Yeah, I hear your voice right now. That's for so, sure. Don't so my take on all this is that my take on this is that the creator created everything. Everything out there is created. So just like we look that out into the world. And in other words, we see no, creation. He created humans and you can you guys created. not have a conversation over the top of this guy's point yeah sorry that's all right so so basically what i'm saying is that the creator created everything and all we have to do is look around us and it's right there if you look at a tree you can you can see that the tree was created so there's no you can read anything into the tree that you want but the the creator created it and that's pretty much it there's no real nothing else to it there's nothing to read it's just like the flat earth you can look out at the world and see a flat earth. There's nothing to explain. It's right in front of you. If you're an idiot. Mm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. The, Why is uh, that an idiot, Alan? Come on. Uh, next time. Mm -hmm. But I, I wouldn't even call it literally created. It is more a design. He designed how things unfold, how life grows, how it responds the the base design blocks of it that is what the creator did and things now just unfold as they have been designed sure well that's Correct. just like tone if why you think about it the creator cancer, uh, why did he design cancer well cancer is actually a, an inherent defense mechanism within all <laughs> within all Damn. organic life forms Damn. and Damn. then Alan, when you oh, can i please can and then when you, when you poison your system and your metabolism, then that cancer no longer functions, can no longer function as it should be, and then it grows out of control. It can no longer be contained. Just like if a society gets poisoned uh, mentally or with, uh, could be diseases or uh, with uh, a certain poli a political stream, then a certain group within that society might start to rebel or they might become corrupted and then they will destroy that society and that is exactly how cancer functions because all human beings have several types of cancer within them constantly all of their life it just doesn't grow out of control normally it only starts to grow out of control when they poison themselves and their metabolism goes out of whack that's when cancer certainly starts to become uh, well, I'm glad you're not uncontainable. Like Alan? globe theory, like globe theory, is a, a cancer within society. You mean, Erwin? Sorry. Are you correlating uh, globe theory to cancer? Is that kind of where you're going? With it? No, he's, he's answering what Alan was saying. That Alan, well, I think the globe, on globe theory is just a, a very extensive mythology. It is a, a fantastical mathematical constructed fairy tale that is very appealing to a lot of people and very easy to abuse for people that want to do that if you won't say it arwin i will definitely say it heliocentrism is a cancerous polyp on the anus of humanity that's what i'm going to say about it so you don't have to like it or state it but i will definitely state it for you all right 
right? You want to say on the brain of humanity. But... You know, if I can jump in there, a lot of people always say that the creator must be bad because he created things that do harm. But what people don't understand is that we live in a world of duality. You can't have one side without the other in reality. Exactly. So yes. you can't have life without death because without either one of them, neither one of them could exist. So, so to attach every disaster to the creator being this bad guy, that's not it at all. We live in a world of duality. It is the and setting. It is the setting for a in the events that are unfolding. Well, technically, Sorry, I think me. that life and death is the setting for this world. It is what it has become after the pre-creation, which was Eden, where everything was immortal. But can I? Yeah, can I just? If everything would have stayed the same, then there would only have been one human. Yeah, two humans basically. Oh, and I'd like to talk to Alan. Alan, will you engage with me? <laughs> is, Alan, is it your position that because there's cancer, there's no creator? There's no creator at all. There's no creator. So, sorry, I missed that. Say that again. There's no creator at all. There is no. Oh, Alan. Uh, hang on, hang on. Let, let, let me stay with, with Alan, please. But Alan, you said because of cancer, there can't be a creator. Was that what you, your argument was a few minutes ago? Not a very loving God if he gives AIDS to babies and cancer to children. <laughs> That's a part of the ignorant. Give me a chance to talk to him. Say that again, please, Alan. No. It's not a very loving God if he gives AIDS to babies in Africa. Who, to, who told you he was a loving God? Yeah. God? And who told you he gave AIDS? Hang on, folks. Come on, let me just engage with Alan. Jeez. Alan, I, I, I spent £40,000 on a brand new Volvo, and yet Volvo recall the car because there was a defect on it. It doesn't mean to say Volvo doesn't exist. Analogy. You're comparing no. a car to children with AIDS. No, no, no. You, what, what you're saying is that there, there can't be a God because there's faults in the creation. There is no God. But, but, but your argument was there can't be a God because he, 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 cre he created babies with AIDS. Well, if he's a God and he's your God, then why did he do that? I don't know. I, I, I don't. I, but you're, you're saying there can't be a God because... There is Babies no God. No, it wasn't. I didn't say that at all. I said there is no God. You have no proof. You, are, you, you yeah, we do. You Creation. Don't. Yeah, we do. You didn't create Life anything. is talking, designed. Talking snakes. If you believe in talking snakes, you're an idiot. Well, it depends <laughs> on what you say that the talking was. Maybe it wasn't verbally speaking. Can I just make my punchline? Maybe please? there was telepathy. Oh, hold on, though. Arwin. Hold on. It was pre-creation. Arwin, hold on. I think Mark's just trying to get to his point. I, I hear atheists say there can't be a God because the, because of the parasites or because of um, AIDS or, or children born blind. I don't buy that as a good argument. Because <laughs> if the designers ha have faults when they design things. As my analogy said, that sometimes even the best recall a product because they made a fault in the design doesn't mean to say that the designer or the manufacturer doesn't exist. And I think that's what your argument was, Alan, when you said why would, why did why did God create my argument is evolution. You know, you, you said sorry, what evidence for evolution have you got though that you haven't got for creation? Do you want to buy your ticket to the National History Museum? No, sorry, I asked for evolution, not for history, for evolution. Well, the history of evolution's there for all to see. Right, so I've, been to, I've been to the National History Museum. They've got nothing but plaster casts of things. Like a brontosaurus, Nathan? Yeah, that sort of thing. Well, they've got lots of plastic animatronics of that. Sorry, um... I know that not, not to interrupt, uh, just to get oh, in there. Yeah. I also think that there is a difference between religion and the creator. They're not the same thing. Yes, I would agree with you on that. Are you finished or am I, did I interrupt? So is that to me, was it? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. Carry on. Uh, Nate, is it okay if I plug um, a rival, not a rival channel, a, a fellow compadre? Yeah, do what you like. He's done a serious amount of uh, work on this video, and uh, it's definitely worth a plug. Um, I'm just going to screen share, Nate, if you wouldn't mind presenting it. What he's actually done, he, uh, Taboo Conspiracy has done a video it just released in the last minute or two, maybe half hour or so, whenever, I'm not exactly sure when. Uh, why I'm a flat earther, 
37 must-see experiments proving that the Earth's flat. And what he's done is he's compiled them all into one big video, and um, he's put the timestamps in them all, so you can look through for particular ones, and it's effectively going to act as a media. Apologies. Pardon? Hey. Apologies. Continue. Say it. Hey. So it's effectively going to act as a, um, like a like a, an encyclopedia from all the flat Earth proofs, all in one place. Obviously, he's going to have to keep updating this. He's not going to. It's going to age with time. So I hope he's realised what he's doing here because he's going to have to keep updating it. Uh, but for example, Skunk Bay. If you want to know where the Skunk Bay time lapse is, you can now find it in this one nice, easy to find video. So if anybody's not familiar with up to date evidence that um, taboo conspiracies volunteered to keep up up to date and maintained. Go on to his channel and check out why I'm a flat earther. 37 must see experiments. And if you know of other experiments that don't exist, please let him know. And I'm sure he'll add to it. And uh, I feel sorry for you, man, because you're going to be doing this for a while. Click share. Obviously, give it a like. Click share and just stick it in the side chat. And I'll put it into the main chat. Stick it in the side chat. I don't yeah, do that. This, oh, that for, for us for the hangout. And then I'll I'll copy it into the main chat. Okay then. Sorted. Uh, now I've got to get back to me thing. Too many windows. Carry on, Alan. Good man, we got that. I vote creation, intelligent design. Well, put it this way. If it's not... If we're here as a result of evolution... Then, and that means therefore that there was no creator. Why is it that there's even a flat Earth debate? Because if it's evolutionary, which is empirical by nature and based on theory, why has nobody measured the curvature in the Earth? Why has nobody measured the axial rotation? And why has nobody been able to de demonstrate anything other than density to claim gravity? Why so do these holes still exist on something that was an exploded rock that you all believe that evolved from? Uh, monkeys all evolved from him. Where did right? Let's go with this basically, right? Where did the monkeys come from that we evolved from? So let's go back linearly. So monkeys came from what? Lizards and the lizards from lizards? fish, so called. So the, and the lizards came from, fish. from one celled organisms. So the one celled organisms came from what? from a puddle of goo that was hit by lightning. And what did the puddle of goo come from? From chemical soup just happened to... And where did that chemical soup come from? Water. It was just there. It was just there, perfect from conditions just happened. happened to be there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Magically. Uh, listen, anybody that believes in evolution, right, just look up either meiosis or mitosis and look up them on YouTube and you can literally watch what they describe or call cell division but actually mm -hmm. to anybody with half a brain it's multiplication and creation one cell splits as they call it but to me creates another cell from nothing and literally you start off with one cell it, you end up with two cells and you watch it magically create out of nowhere and they call that division i mean anywhere i were if somebody if somebody had one pound or one ice cream and then you <laughs> give them another ice cream you would have two ice creams that would be double but somehow they call it division <laughs> So if you want, if you think, if you still think that evolution Tony, is it, Tony, if you look up FE evolution, you'll find a page that says de-evolution and a picture of you and Nathan. Ooh, you're so <laughs> funny, Alan. You're so funny. Yeah, folks, you so look up like so a biom, a the term a a biomorphs and a biotic oil, oil too. No, Alan, I don't think you're it. worthy of this hangout. I've got you Just presented, Chris. You. What did you say? Evolution is a religion. Just to add to some of the terms that Anthony was talking about there, you know, people should look up abiomorphs and abiotic oil and all of that stuff and how much RNA and DNA is found in oil reserves and everything else. And it's abiotic and flash of lightning and it, some pressure and temperature. You end up with living organisms. So you're, we're literally burning the future of creation itself, essentially, when you burn oil. Did we leave that? Did we lose Alan? Yeah, I think so. I hope nobody kicked him. Well, it's... No, I don't... Sulfur, it's the sulfur-reducing bacteria in the, in the abiotic oil that, you know, is basically the blood of Earth that keeps you alive, so keep on burning your future. That's smart. 
humans are so smart, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm too smart. Maybe that's what I they've think co-opted. That we have to, I Hello, think that we have to be careful what we call religion and what we call reality. Hello? Hello. Hello. Oh, dear. Honor? Hello? Hello? Hello. Hi. Hey. How's it going, people? Great. Very well. We love the name. Another of beautiful day at Globe Earth, right? Yeah, man, it's been a thousand miles an hour. We can't feel nothing. <laughs> Good man. What are you moving in a thousand miles an hour in reference to? What's going a thousand miles an hour? The universe. The, the universe. universe. So there's a plane traveling over my head at 700 miles an hour. How does that relate to me? I don't get it. It's relative to you, isn't it? But you're going a bit faster than that. You're going 66,000 miles an hour around the sun. Apparently. So I'm yeah, going 66,000 miles an hour around the sun, 1,000 miles an hour around the equator, 700 miles an hour in relationship to this plane. I don't, I don't get how that relates to me, though. They're, they're moving, but I'm not, right? You tell us this is your nonsense, not ours. Yeah. The sun and Earth and the entire solar system is supposedly spinning around that black hole, the Milky Way, which is spinning around the, the other more larger black hole at the center of the mega galaxy the great attractor. that is spinning around something even more and it's all spinning so so incredibly fast with such velocity that no matter should be able to exist under that kind of force on wobbling axes and in the elliptical orbits with no acceleration or deceleration in the corners or exits it's, it's quite the hockey game yeah, but I'm moving at zero miles per hour in relationship to the ground beneath me. So how do I don't understand how all these things... close to the centrifugal forces of the entire universe. Exactly. <laughs> you can't have the disease and avoid the freaking symptoms, man. Uh, that's, what, that's why I proposed an experiment to show you guys that the centrifugal force is basically, you know, so minimal that it wouldn't affect you if, in fact, we're on a rotating globe. Yeah, it Good. might not right, affect like those. Point, it does it does affect the, the, the gases in the atmosphere. It might not affect us, I agree. But why are the gases in the atmosphere not upside down relative to us? Because it's only 0.3% um, the effect of gravity. Right. 0.03%. It's still, a positive, it's still a positive Newtonian integer at, this, uh, at the equator. Still positive the velocity. Gravity is supposed to decrease in strength the further you will go up. So eventually... The centrifugal yeah, but not, force not, not, will not, 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 the gravity force because centrifugal force actually enhances when it's further away from the center axis. <laughs> exactly, but it's yeah, so exactly. small. Exactly, so it's that so should work. Much the atmosphere should be slung off the Earth because gravity is not strong enough to keep it there, and the centrifugal force is actually becoming stronger higher up. So. Some yeah, but gravity is like a hundred times stronger off, than the centrifugal venting force. Venting off hour. into the vacuum of space. So, so you're saying something that's one hundred of the so. force of gravity is going to make it fling off. I don't, I don't really get that argument. <laughs> Unorthodox. You're I saying said. it's so, it's so slight. Then who came up with it in the first place, anyway? Well, I, I presented fair. the equations on on the show. It's F equals R omega M. It's a very oh, simple okay. equation. What, what was that? What's R? Um. The equation is the force, the centrifugal force, equals R times omega, which is the angular rotation, times M times the mass. And what, so what's it's a very simple what, equation. What, what's rotating? Whatever. What's rotating? Well, whatever you want to be rotating. The Earth, I don't, um, I don't, I don't, the atmosphere, the Earth, whatever. That's, it. That's, that, that, that's your problem. You're coming in with us that the Earth is, is rotating. It's a presumption. We don't feel that. So how did you come up with we're going so slow we can't... This is the problem we had last time. The the flat earthers argument is if the if the earth is in fact spinning, then the centrifugal force will cause the gases to go up, be higher in the atmosphere. My point is that that's wrong. If we are in fact spinning, then that is not true. The the atmosphere, the heavier objects will not be at the top of the atmosphere. Everything will be just as it is right now. How many times do you have to beg the question on this show in Orthodox? If the world is spinning, then that's true. So if your presupposition works, then your outcome is correct. That's begging the question. What's no, begging the question? No, I'm debunking a... your argument. No. no, you're not. You're claiming something. 
if the world is spinning, if you start with that presumption, you are begging the question. I'm debunking your argument, Nathan. Uh, you can't use my argument from earlier with that dumbass, right? <laughs> no, you are making an assertion. Your assertion was, if the earth is spinning. So you start with that presupposition that the earth is spinning. That's called begging the question. No, I'm starting with your argument, which is, if the earth is spinning, it's your argument, it's the flat Sorry, earth. Sorry, when on earth would a flat earther claim that the earth would be spinning? We're not claiming that. You are, you dumbass. No, no, you're claiming that if... No, the... we're not claiming that the earth is spinning and orthodox. Don't just repeat it. You're claiming, because you're an idiot with the religious belief in this R value, you have no scientific evidence R. You're Nathan, claiming... Can I address this, please? Right, Nathan. Nathan, can I address this, please? Sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, you apparently don't have any conception of how centrifugal force works. Have you ever been on like one of those small spinning wheels at the playground? Have you ever been on yes, one of those? Yes, I'm an engineer. I've been oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, now prove it that you actually know something. Have you ever I been on one of those? I presented the equation on your show. Have you ever been on one of those? No, Arwen. Yes, no. obviously I have as a well, kid. Let, I've me, been tell on, you, I've been let me tell you how it works when you're on one of those. If you're going to spin oh, that thing around. Math? And you're, can you, are you going to let me finish? You got yeah? I hope you got some math for this. No, you don't need math. You just need to oh, but figure you out how it works. You can experience this yourself. You can go to a playground and test this out. If you're going to yeah, spin one of these wheel stuff. things and you're going to stand in the center. Then even if the thing is spinning pretty fa fast, if you can keep your center, you'll stay perfectly well. You might get a little dizzy from spinning around your own axis. That's fine. Now then, if you actually move further away from the center to the the side of the spinning wheel, you'll start to notice that the force applied on you, thanks to the centrifugal force, starts to increase quite dramatically. That's, and that's if why you are hanging on the right edge right. of that that's wheel when it's right spinning right. that same speed, you'll notice that that force will increase so dramatically that most people tend to like slip off. They can't hold on because the force becomes so incredible that they just can't hold on anymore. You know why that is? Because Wait, what's the, what's the can you let me finish, man? Because oh, we gotta, we gotta can you let me finish? Is, let me finish. Let is it me hours a finish. Day? Just all I want to know is the angular let, rotation rate. Let me That's finish. It. Yeah? It's not going to take long. You just have to bear through this, Mr. Engineer. Okay. So why so this is, right? is because centrifugal force of something increases dramatically the further away from the axis of rotation the mass that is being rotated will be. Yeah? Yes, so, I have an R in my equation, Arwen. Yeah, in your equation, your equation. That is how centrifugal force has been proven to work. The further yes, away from the axis of rotation, around. the greater the forces of the centrifugal force becomes. This is a known You're not making fact. any points It's a that physical are wrong, fact. Man. Are you an engineer? Are you just... Are you you just make you basically up, aren't just you? explain my just equation, a dude. You're a liar. You You're not a my equation, Arwen. This is basic schooling. Everyone you knows this. You can explain this yourself. You're a liar. You just explain my equation, Arwen. Yeah, I don't need any freaking equations. This is just basic physics that everyone can test. Basic physics. Can physics I just told you how to, and you're ignoring equations. equations. Your equations. Equals MA you're is a the liar. Physics you're equation. You're a liar and a pretender. You're not an engineer at all. You're just a ma well, magician. It doesn't. It doesn't really it's matter. The, the ma what matters is the main point. You're a liar. Valid. You're a liar. You're not an engineer. You don't. I'm a liar. Basic You're physics, me a liar. the centrifugal force. You're a liar. I, well, you just explained my equation, Arwen. You but basically you need just to explain your equation. equation. No, that's what you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I explained the workings of centrifugal force. F and equals R omega M. If you increase R, you increase F. When it goes away from the actual rotation point. That's what I explained. And that is when the Earth is spinning, eventually, the higher up you go, the stronger the centrifugal force will become on the entire mass, including the gas that is rotating around that axis. While the gravity force that you assume is caused by gravitational pull will actually decrease the further away from the central mass you go. Otherwise, your not precious much, satellites would not be able to float up there, would they? So 
That's funny. Your I just model saw that. falls apart at the seams once again. You got like only about point zero zero one percent of society yeah. thinks that it falls yeah, apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? Argument ad populum. Who cares what one percent of anybody thinks? He's just debunked you based on your own nonsense. And now you're just going to an argument of how many people believe your bullshit. So what? Nobody cares how many people believe it. Excuse me. Why not? Why not? When it's lo if it's logically based, if 99.99% yeah, of people can follow not. the logic. It's not logically based. It's a fairy tale and it doesn't work. You when you argue actually straw, man. start to apply physics. Yeah? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, you're excused. Stupid cats. Good lord. One second. Because opinion an opinion is... Uh, hang on. Because an opinion is popular doesn't make it true. There's 600 million Roman Catholics in the world that believe that the Pope is the Vicar of Christ. It doesn't make it true. <laughs> yeah, but they're not using logic, though. Using no, no, logic, they're not though. losing logic. And and are you using logic? Well, yeah, of course I'm using logic. I, I don't I don't feel me like just debunking your logic. I, I, I don't feel I just applied regular, measurable, confirmable forces and how they function on your theoretical model and shows you why it can't work. And you're just ignoring you're it just because you believe your consensus. You know, your logical you don't actually apply your logic. You just keep it in the field of theory and don't think about the consequences. But you're logical and everybody oh, and believes what you're saying. So you're right. Yeah. So I was going to present the experiment live on the show to show you guys that this Please is legit. You already went through it. It's not an experiment, right? And it doesn't prove anything. You're just going to apply the results it to prove the anything. It doesn't. Yeah, it would. It would prove that the equation for centrifugal force is correct. Nobody disputes that but you're going to arbitrarily apply that to an earth with a radius value that you've got an assumption for, so it's meaningless. We already went through this on another show. So what? Nobody disagrees that you can calculate centrifugal force. Yeah, but I want to debunk your guys' argument. I'm debunking your argument. And what is the argument that you're debunking? So, so you're going to debunk the, the, the argument that if the earth was spinning, then the gases would be, the heavier gases the would be higher up. Hold on, let me answer debunk that? Are you going to debunk my question. argument? Are Hold on, let me, let me answer his question. What was your name? Who's the guy um, that was just speaking? Ask me what argument I'm debunking is. Mark. Yeah, I Mark. wasn't. Mark. I wasn't okay, the, the, Mark, yeah. let, me, let me answer Mark's, Mark's question. Mark, the, the argument that I'm debunking is the flat earth argument that if the earth was in fact spinning, then all the heavier gases would be at the top of the atmosphere. Uh, you're talking to the wrong person because I wasn't. No, that was me. That, that was me. I'm interested. Go on. What was that? What, why? How are we going to debunk that? Well, I was going to show that the, centri the centrifugal force is so negligible, that it's so small on a rotating body that rotates at 24 hours in one day. You know, one revolution per 24 hours. Right. So are you if you're on a merry-go-round, it was wait, going wait, around wait, once every 24 wait, hours. Wait, wait, wait. In your calculations, are you going to consider and take into account uh, the tangential speed or the rim velocity? No, you don't need to. You just need omega, which is the angle. No, no, no. You do need to. Why would you not no, need you to? Why would you not take into account the rim velocity? Because you don't have to. You need to know how fast the object is moving and on the tangential speed, otherwise you can't. That's, where, all, that's where the radius comes in. You can you can <laughs> substitute you can substitute in the tangential velocity, or you can substitute back in the angular velocity. Whatever right, so you do, it with the tangential the velocity, you get r. Do it with the tangential, and let's see what value you get. Because the only the only value you should tangential. get is 10, 10, 24 miles an hour at the equator. Whenever you do it with that tangential, then you have to divide by the radius, which is a really large number. So you get a well, small let's number. Let's see your maths and let's see what you come out with and let's see how, what your formulation is. And then ultimately, Nathan will just so Nathan will just say, prove R, regardless well, of what you come out with. Well, I'm just trying to debunk one of y'all's arguments. So you're not arguing against a straw man. So you can argue. No, no, against we're, the not, we're not arguing. Listen, the idea is that there is, a, you, you guys claim and believe that there is a, a rotation of the planet. If there was a yeah. rotation of the planet, because of its radius, it creates a rim velocity, a, tangent, a tangential speed, correct? Yes, yes. And that, therefore, doesn't affect us, apparently, but because mass, the, our mass is much heavier than the gas, it will affect the gas because the gas is much lighter. So the gas will be directly affected by it and should invert in the atmosphere. We should see the densest gas at the top 
and we should see the, uh, the, the lightest gas at the bottom because of the centrifuge that you guys believe is there. Well, I could show that. I could I could do it in relationship to, to like a meter, a cubed meter of gas. I could show what the actual uh, centrifugal force is on like a cubed meter of gas. I could look at in that line. I've been trying to put this together. Yeah, he's a centrifuge. It's not just gas. It's all mass. In do I now? Say that again. I said it's not just gas. It's all mass under acceleration. So you have to calculate the acceleration acting on all the mass of everything. In rotation so on go all for it. the mass caught no you're just looking like a massive body you're isolating one thing like me or a cube meter of gas or oh it's an, it's an open system of mass and rotation including the water the gas and everything yeah i'm not system. doing a summation of the entire earth system i'm just looking at Why one not? isolated thing Why on not? Earth your theory. claim is that that's what earth is doing do what your claim is that that is what earth is doing yeah so why are you going to prove that that's what Earth is doing? Force in relationship to the Earth's rotation. This is what I said earlier. You've come along with something that nobody disputes. Yeah, that we have. You guys dispute it. We dispute it in relation to Earth, not as a singular concept isolated from anything to do with Earth. You're saying that this translates to Earth, and when we say, "Are you going to show it in relation to Earth?" You say, "No." I'll just show you an isolated experiment, which isn't an experiment. Well, I'm going to use the rotation rate of Earth. What rotation rate? Uh, the given scientific model, right? Oh, Which is so what you're you just going to use R, right? So you're just going to assume the radius I can, and I'm assume everything use a bunch about of R's. it. I'll use little r, big r, medium r, super big r, just to show that it really doesn't matter because that's such a small rotational rate. Because you're an right. r tar. You're an idiot. You have an assumption of an r value, yeah? And you're just going to apply that arbitrarily to Earth like it means that that's true. And it doesn't. You need to actually validate that R value. If you're going to start telling us to do experiments and you already have an R value, then you've already got a sphere, haven't you? There's your proof. You've got R. No, I, I got an R from presupposing it was a square or an octagon or a tetrahedron or a triangle. That's how I got an R value. Nathan, I've just realized why this guy's got an issue. He doesn't realize that we're using the very point that he's trying to prove, centrifugal force, we're using that to prove that it doesn't exist i.e. we don't see anything that's affected by the centrifugal force and exactly. it's supposed to be there so we're not we're not disputing that it's a thing we're disputing it doesn't apply to earth because it's not there right. wouldn't you be better focusing on something to prove that there is a centrifugal force in the earth no you no you're saying there's certain phenomena we should see if the earth is in fact a spinning globe and yeah. centrifugal force exists one of those phenomena no, nobody's being disputing that, that centrifugal force exists what well, Anthony is saying that it's demonstrable that if you have a centrifugal force, things get centrifuged to the outside, especially light particles like vapor. So, therefore, logic would dictate that if you have a centrifugal force operating itself and its forces on a gas, that we would have the same effect if the Earth was in fact doing that. That is your assertion that is being debunked by what we actually see when we put things in a centrifuge. You're arguing against a straw man. I'm trying to get you. No, we're not. We're arguing against nonsense. You claim the Earth is spinning. Prove it. Uh, well, I can do the Foucault pendulum. You want me to do the Foucault pendulum experiment on the show? It's not an experiment. How many times have we got to have this crap come on for us to say that it's not an experiment and it proves nothing? Do it in relation. Listen. Do it in relation to a centrifugal force that you that has to be there by virtue of it spinning. You prove with a centrifugal force illustration how there is an. There is a centrifugal force on the Earth. Well, I mean, it's the same. Like, if you had, you know, a little bit about space, right? If you had like a spaceship in space, the the way that you get fake gravity is you rotate it. So the effect of a rotating object is the exact same effect of, that gravity has. It's an acceleration. So you can't distinguish between one acceleration or the other acceleration. You just add them up, and you get the they add up, and you get the end value. So, but I can show that the centrifugal force, if the earth was spinning at 24 hours per day and the radius is what it is, that it... There's where you beg the question. Where you insert that, that's a formal logical fallacy. Yeah? If P, then Q, Q, then P, that's what you're doing. I'm showing that there's nothing wrong You're not with showing the model, anything Nathan. to do you're with earth. Anything. How many times have I got to say it? Just asserting that if the earth is a sphere, that's where you beg the question. You see, you're still arguing against a straw man. I'm not arguing against a straw man. 
Why? What is it with you? Have you guys on the globe side just learnt this term straw man recently and now apply it to absolutely everything? No. Wrong. What you're doing is a formal logical fallacy. Simple. Why? Well, I don't. What? I don't get why. When you've come on the show dozens of times and we point it out every time you do it, you still don't get it. Because all I hear is a straw man. It's not a straw Dude. man. You are making an assumption. If the Earth is a sphere, then as soon as you do that. You already have the presupposition that you're on a sphere. Then you demonstrate an effect of something completely unrelated and relate it back to the Earth. What if I logically deduce the Earth is a sphere? Does that work? <sighs> no. You have to provide scientific evidence and prove it, my friend. You don't just make... I saw a live stream from the ISS last night that showed uh, an R value. It looked pretty, uh, looked pretty good. Hey, Chris. Chris Berry, how are you doing? Can you hear us? What do you Hello. Think? So the live stream doesn't Hold prove on. it from the ISS. That's your cue to shut up. Chris, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Good to have you. Good to be here. I saw Father Christmas flying over New York City. Chris was just so flying over New York City. Hey, on Orthodox. So the thing yes. is, is it's true. You're not claiming. You're not claiming this. You're not claiming that. The the issue is that you are believing it. You have no proof, and you're defending it. Why are you defending it? What do you mean like, I don't have any proof? Hard. There's thousands of images from space. There's satellites. I have friends who work for NASA, really? satellite companies. Can you prove you've got any friends that work for NASA? Uh, in the past, I mean, yeah. Go on, then. I mean, I, well, I mean... You've already fallen. You to on here? I mean, I don't know. Prove that you've got a friend that works for NASA. Uh, well, I'll, I'll work on that. Yeah, I'll email. bring him on the show or something. You were bluffing, weren't you? Yeah, um, no, I mean, it's probably once removed. You know, it's not like my direct friend. It's somebody I know that they know. You oh, know what right. I mean? You so sound like, like a you're a liar just like before. No, I mean, you're I'm an engineer. You don't have any friends at NASA. I don't think, I don't think you <laughs> really a big speak company, the truth man. There's about a lot anything. Of people that have worked for NASA. I think you're a deceptive no, You claim that you had a friend that did. Well, I, well, I used the wrong word. What's the word? Uh, not a friend, but a... Uh, uh, it's called well, bluffing. Uh, Somebody yeah, you've heard of. I'd say it's wrong. That you imagine is your friend. So come on, no, that's, I don't that's, imagine that's, him as my friend. Just an acquaintance, an acquaintance. The there we go. The globe. So I think you can imagine all kinds of friends. There we go. There's, there's so my. Is what is that? So you're if, let me ask you: If I bring this acquaintance on, and he tells oh. you that they do in fact create satellites and shoot them up to no, space, no, are you going to believe him? What we'll accept is if him. you get him on your Facebook friends list and show us that guy on your Facebook friends list, and it says employed by NASA. That's what we'll accept. Can you do that now? No, what do you want? I don't I don't think I have my Facebook. I don't, I, I'm called, I don't, I don't really think you've Facebook got a here. friend that works An acquaintance. An, even an acquaintance. Is he on your Facebook friends list? I don't know. I don't really get on Facebook, dude. Really? How convenient. I don't get on Facebook. How, how convenient. You, you how said convenient? You had a friend. Am I a 40-year-old woman? Do you get on Facebook? <laughs> you, you said you had a friend that works for NASA. Now you're backtracking, aren't you? I've ran into people throughout my life who... Our acquaintances who projected to me that they work for NASA. I have no reason to disbelieve them. Now, if you want me to try and reach out and get one of them on your show, I'd be more than happy to do that. Do yeah, that. Let's just let's do just that. say that People I let's just say that I do, do that, that and I bring them on here. What yes. are you guys going to believe what they say? Bring them on and let's have a chat with them. Well, probably. You're not, just gonna dismiss, every, you're not just going to dismiss everything they say. Not at all. Not Depends at all. what they tell no. us. Bring them on. Depends what they say. Like Scott M. Beach, like you dismiss everything he says, right? Well, Who's he that? told us that his daddy told Is he him your friend? that his, his daddy told him that he went to space while he had his mates that were also claiming oh, space. Okay, mate. here we go. So it really doesn't matter, does it? No, Is he, yeah. that's Is he your he, friend. That's Called what, hearsay. Is he right. your friend? You guys are hard satellites that, that you can see with your naked eye, sleeping warrior. That's not hearsay. No, you can't prove there's a satellite. You, only thing that you can deduce from your own eyesight is that you see a light. That's it. No, you can clearly distinguish an object like that that mirrors what they say the ISS is in a tr transit across the moon. So are we talking about satellites generally? Point, point about ISS. Signals, right? Hang on. Are we talking about satellites generally? or Because you did say satellites. Now you're talking specifically about the ISS. Well, the ISS is a satellite. Right. So we're talking about the ISS specifically. I agree. I've got photos of the ISS myself, and it does conform to what they tell me it looks like. I agree. Does it mean it's got people on it? Why couldn't it have people on it? It's up there. Does it, mean, does it mean it's got people on it? I mean, no, not necessarily just looking at it, but that and the fact they have live streams and videos and all this other crap means it does. 
Really? Are you sure? I still don't, that, you know, I still don't understand why. There's really no point to lie about this. That's the thing money. that I come back to almost every day. There's no money. breaking point. Money, do, like, power, me, control. There's okay, three okay. good reasons. Okay, well, let me ask you this. So if tomorrow it was proven the earth was flat, how would that change the world? Well, NASA would be gone straight away, wouldn't he? Well, no, people would still want to explore the outer edges, so probably not. So, yeah, let's get the people who lied through their back teeth about what the outer edges were up until now. Let's get them to lead the charge. Hooray, Vanessa. Yay. Let's all give them loads more money. Right. I don't think so, unorthodox. I think there'd be an uproar. Well, you're probably right. They probably would get rid of NASA and they would get something that resembled NASA in its functionality. So if they want all the money, how come SpaceX? How come they're bringing SpaceX in and giving them money? You think they'd want to hoard it for themselves, right? It's probably because they're getting too much flack themselves. That goes directly against your conspiracy theory. It's like at 180 degrees. That's in direct opposition to your to theory. It. They're adding what? somebody else to it to deflect the blame away from them. I mean, let's put it this way. Elon Musk, right? SpaceX. He said, you can tell it's real because it looks so fake. Why would he use them words? Because it's a, because it's a rare image. It's, he just He's trying to uh, you know assert the fact that it's a rare image. So you, you don't the think there's he, anything suspicious about the wording that he uses, no? No, he's just being 100% legitimate. It's a rare image. It looks fake because most of the images you see from that far out, the only satellite that we know of, it, well, there's the one uh, so, marble, so guess, the one marble shot, and then the Himawari 8. Other than that, you really don't get pictures of the Earth from that far away. So, so let me but guess. Just, you you believe that space, uh, what's it, Starman is real because you've got no reason to suggest that it might not be, right? Exactly. I saw the live stream. I saw the thousands of people on the ground all watching the, the SpaceX rocket go up, concurrently watching the live you, feed on their phones. You are a millennial. Rocket go up. You are uh, a millennial. You, I'm 32 years old. So yeah, I think you're exactly. Right. You're a millennial. What year were you born? 85. What? 85? 80, 85, yeah. Oh, well, you're an old millennial then. Yeah, I'm on the upper end. You're I don't one of those happy clappers that... You're one of those happy clappers that when they get a rocket launch that they believe is like, or oh, whatever's going on, and they all start cheering and, and congratulating each other as though they just scored a World Cup goal, right? That's what that's what you are, right? You and Red's best mates. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's fascinating to me that our technology is so advanced that yeah. we have a vein of people like you guys denying that it even exists yeah. or it's even possible. Good job, it's man. Really I feel all motivated now when I speak to you. Have you never seen the rockets landing, like the dual boosters? They come back to Earth and they flip around and then they kind of yeah. settle themselves. I yeah, mean, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them. Thunderbirds. That's all it is. So that I went to work the day after. I went to work the day after the car was in quote unquote sent to space by Elon Musk, and I asked yeah. one of my coworkers. He's, I think, he's 21 now or 22, and I asked, "Hey, dude, what do you think about that? Did you see that?" The space thing that happened yesterday, Elon Musk, you know what his answer answer was? Quote, unquote. What? Bro, he's Elon fucking Musk, dude. <laughs> and I just walk away. I mean, okay, just at face value, right? He's got a car company. He's got a rocket company now that's going to take over part of NASA or take over, you know, flights for them. On face value, he's doing some pretty incredible stuff. He's a man. He's a self-made millionaire. He made PayPal. He sold yeah, it. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah, exactly. It's a great story. And there's really no reason, like I said, there's really no reason to believe that that didn't happen. There's no like logical, you know, um, conspiracy theory that I've heard of. I can go with you on other conspiracies, but the flat earth, I can't go with you because it doesn't make any sense. I haven't heard any good arguments. All I've heard is straw men, uh, lies, and shitty yeah. arguments. No worries. Worries. Let's, let's just, ask, let's just ask you a quick question. What's what? your scientific evidence of the value that you use to presuppose the Earth is a sphere when they give you trajectories and Earth rotation? What's your scientific evidence of the R used in all the mathematics? You want my scientific evidence? My scientific, my scientific evidence of the R value they use. It seems kind of odd. So you don't you use it? So this is a debate about whether or not the Earth is a sphere, and you have a value that says it's a sphere. I'm asking for the scientific evidence of that value, and you think that's odd. Oh, you're just like saying, oh, all these people are doing this stuff. You give me the evidence they have. Well, if, if you prove gravity, that dictates that the Earth has to be a sphere. And the horizon, you can get the math out of the horizon. Who is Sorry. it that's got the onus of proof? Hold on, Anthony. Hold on. Hold on.
you guys, you guys Sorry, are making hold on, crazy hold on, claim. Hold on, I've asked you a very direct question. You haven't answered it. So I'm going to ask it again. Hopefully you won't talk over me. Right? Go ahead. What is your scientific evidence for the value of R? Um, I don't need scientific evidence. All I need is to see a satellite, Nathan, or see live streams of the ISS or see the thousands of pictures from space or the thousands of images of the globe. Sorry, that doesn't answer my satellites. question. So I don't, was your answer you don't need scientific evidence? No, for... I, don't, no I don't need it for the R Okay, value, no. so while you're telling us that we've got nothing but straw mans and no good arguments, you are basically accepting a presupposition that it's a sphere. So somebody somewhere assumes it's a sphere, tells you the value and gives you in the mathematics and you're happy to say i don't need any scientific evidence of this right no, if okay well if no is your answer then that's fine you accept the presupposition of r and the fantasies that go along with it because you have tv pictures and we will say we would prefer that it was actually scientifically validated rather than just assumed but no, you, you can wouldn't prove gravity on your you show can tell twice. me all about gravity something that needs r yeah you can go one step further down this begging the question fallacy and start telling me about other things that require the presupposition of R, but you haven't got any scientific evidence of R. So you can tell me my argument's crap, but your argument your is based... Crap. Well, you can tell me that no, when you let like. Me, okay, I answered your question, you answered my question. So if I punch you in the face... Sorry, you uh, your answer was, I don't need scientific evidence. So you didn't give me scientific evidence of the R value that you your know, religion is question. based on. That's what your religion's based on. Answer my question, Nathan. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to harp on about R because that's the crux of this debate. Whether or not the Earth is a sphere, you're saying it is a sphere because I say it is, I've got an R value. It's been given to me and I've got pictures from space. And I say, well, what's your scientific evidence for it? And you say, I don't need any. I can be content. I've got an assumption. I just assume it's a ball. That's fine. Look, I've got these other proofs that use the same assumption and they confirm the assumption. Therefore, the assumption's correct. Yet yeah, you're an idiot. No, when you have a real world object like a satellite rotating around the globe Earth, you don't need... Rotating around the globe Earth. So there you go with your presupposition again. So you look at some light in the sky and decide that light is moving because the Earth is turning. That's called a presupposition. You don't get it. You're a dumbass. No, it's called a logical deduction, Nathan. Right. I'd rather have scientific evidence. That's why I said, what's your scientific evidence of R? As opposed to, what's your logical deduction that the Earth's a sphere? <laughs> That's not Are what you I asked, is it? I believe... Right. A little bit mis so, we started this little back and forth, unorthodox, with you telling me that we had nothing but crap arguments and straw men, right? You so, do. <laughs> so, is the best thing you've got to prove your version of the world just the assumption that it is a ball that's the best argument no, the best thing got. i have to prove my world is is a physical you don't have to prove it all right it's not a flat earth debate we're not here debating this subject daily for 333 shows it's not like you need to prove any of this stuff just to show point zero it, three newtons of acceleration in all directions blah 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 make that oh, work point. in a computational fluid dynamics experiment let me see it oh really you, you know fluid dynamics that's one of the harder subjects in all of physics uh, fluid dynamics is an absolute mess. It's nasty. <laughs> very difficult. Very difficult subject. Probably my worst uh, course in uh, my engineering degree was fluid well, dynamics. You believe it's a bendy water somewhere. It's, it's hard for you. Yeah, you well, that's the horizon. That's the bending water. You water accelerating from the poles towards the equator at a rate of 0 0.03 newtons per meter per second or whatever. Do it up and let's see how it works. Yeah, I don't... I don't do you know you talking about the centrifugal force? No, acceleration of of the mass due to the inertia on a spinning sphere. Well, that's called the centrifugal force. Gravitational fluid dynamics. Yes. No, well, it's gravity, it's more than one. gravity would just cancel it out. I don't need to do a, a huge model. It's just that gravity is like a hundred It times results in a positive 0 0.03 newton of, of acceleration in all directions. And you have to do it equilaterally and on the, on the vertices and make it, make it work. It's accelerating downward at the poles and outwards at the equator. So do the computational fluid dynamics. No, I don't. I don't have to. There's a horizon that you can't see past. There's your bending water, right? So you can't do it, is what you're saying. 
correct? Uh, no, I don't. I'm not. I'm not uh, sufficiently versed to do a huge computational model of globe Earth. You're right. I'm not. That would take me quite a while, and maybe I need a few more engineers. I don't think I'm capable of doing that by myself and making it proper. Now, if you I'll want that super, super, super simplification of the whole globe Earth, thing. maybe I could do that. Nah, you're all right. So, isn't the horizon bendy water? What are you talking about? Well, you should being you... absolutely obliterated with like three sentences from Chris. Now you want to talk about the horizon. I'd rather we all revel in your humiliation. That's much more amusing. Well, I can't hear. I can't hear what both of you guys are talking over each other. Yeah, you've just been taking. But the other pieces. guy makes some arguments. Nate, you're you're talk talking too again. Much. You said you couldn't hear, so I'm repeating what I said. Yeah, Chris has just. Go ahead. Go ahead. Chris has just ripped you to pieces. Yeah, now you're talking about the horizon. Pieces. And I would prefer to just revel in your humiliation for a bit. Is that okay with you? I didn't realize, I'm so humiliated, I didn't realize I was being humiliated. All right, maybe, maybe Chris needs to go through it again with you. Can I make a point from the sidelines here? <laughs> go ahead. From sure, what, go ahead. From what, I'm, from what I'm saying, you know, from listening to the show, that a lot of things happen is that once you assume something and you don't prove it and you just keep on moving past it, well, everything after that is like building a house on sand. Because if you don't have a foundation, then everything else doesn't mean anything. So all the satellites, the people that work at NASA, all of that stuff means nothing if you don't have a foundation. Now, it appears that this radius value is really important, but everybody wants to keep skipping past that. Yep. Why not just explain what the scientific evidence for the R value is so that moving forward, we're not building houses on sand like Big Bangs and evolution. Um, I, See, that's what happens. Nathan won't accept it. Well, can, I just, can, just, accept evidence. can I just say as well that that answer there that was just given is the reason why we stay on the main three topics because if you can't get past those main three topics, at least one of them three main topics, then all of the other topics that are based on those three topics fall. So it's a little bit limited in terms of the show. But that's why we don't move into things that we don't know what we're talking about, like, I don't know, quantum mechanics, for example, or anything that's really niche. We, we don't need to know all that. We just want to see the proof of R, proof of curve, proof of gravity, axial rotation. And we don't really need to go beyond that until it's produced evidence to prove the point. And if it isn't there, sorry, guys, that's where we stop. You guys won't accept it because it uses the horizon. I could use the horizon <laughs> to show. The horizon. Let me, let me, let me, horizon. Let me, guys. Guys, let me finish my point. You kind of cut me off in there. Yeah, I want to make a counterpoint to your point after you're done. That's fine. So basically what I'm saying is from what I'm saying, you guys really need to stop bypassing stuff and just saying, well, I don't need that because I see a satellite in the sky, so I don't need to prove the foundation. You have to have a foundation. Without it, you have nothing else. So everything else that you're claiming beyond that foundation is absolutely useless. That's why I understand why these guys stay on track and won't let you guys uh, get off track. But you keep on getting off track with all this other stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with the question. How did you come up with the R value? That's the only question there is. All the rest of it means nothing. No, the fact that there's satellites in orbit and the foundation... Well, literally, you're going to circle jerk him around. He's literally ended his point saying that you have to prove the foundation. Yeah, satellites have got a trajectory. Gravity requires R. All these things are built on a foundation, the same foundation that he's just pointed out to you that you can't just expand upon and use as proof. And all you've done is circle jerk back to the satellite nonsense. Yeah, yeah the foundation was done to get the satellite yeah. into orbit. Right, That's so you need to prove that assumption. So you've sent satellites up with an assumption of a globe Earth, and you think that proves it. And no, 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 you've already got the proof in the R value. That's why we're asking for proof of that. The foundation, the bit you assume. It's not assumed because the foundation was done in preparation to get the satellite into orbit. They did all that scientific stuff. and they did Excellent. All Excellent. Tell us what scientific stuff, right? That technical term of scientific stuff as opposed to scientific experimentation. Tell us what scientific stuff they did to give you R. Well, if you need, if you have gravity, you know R. Oh, here we go. So gravity, I've just said it requires R also, doesn't it, dick brain? Hello? Hello? Yeah, it's so based on the same foundation. Hello? Did you not listen Hello? to a word that guy just said? 
No. Yeah, I'm rebutting his argument. No, you're no. not. You're using the presupposition to rebut an argument about having an assumed value of R. That's not. So how'd they get the satellite up there, Nathan? They got the satellite up there without they didn't. Uh, figuring they out what R was. That's the point. Your entire they world did. collapses it's a fairy based tale on that. You bought it. You can see the ISS. Arwen. Yeah, you flail, telling us about what you can see. Yeah, they got it up using an assumed value of R. Where'd you get the R from? I don't need it. It doesn't matter that it, it doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> what a perfectly predictable response. It doesn't matter that we assume it. Who cares? It doesn't matter. We'll assume anything we like, right? I can assume R. It doesn't matter that I just assume it's a globe, right? No, no. they assume it. They it logically deduced all. it and put in satellite up you in orbit dick. due to that value. Yeah. <laughs> like all that pie in the sky, pie in the sky, because once well, you assume that value was wrong, it's a ratio to the satellite. Pie in the sky. Pie in the sky. Well, you only asked the guy who made the point. Who, what's his name? The guy that made the point I'm referring to? Flick, Flick James. James? Flick James? Yeah. Six, Flick James. Okay, Slick James. So so you're saying go back and do all the foundational stuff that they did uh, to, in order to get the satellite up there in the first place. Why do we need to go back and re-prove what's already been proven if the satellite's already up there? Prove the question. Let the guy answer. Let me answer. Let me answer the question. The thing is that you don't have to go back and do anything. All you have to do is explain what it was that gave you that value so that we can understand on the other side of the debate what may, gave you the possibility of putting a satellite up there in the first place. If all you do is move past it, then you leave us without any understanding. So were you giving us all this other stuff, we're still sitting here in limbo because we don't know where you got the R from in the first place. So if it's okay for you to move past it, the problem is it's not okay for us to move past it. We're the ones that can get past it. You can, but we can't. So you saying that we don't need it, the argument is over because we need it. And if you don't have it, we have a problem. Well, we we can get it. We've There's plenty of people who have presented it on the show. Nathan uh, did us, accept tell us it. What, tell us what you got. What you got. Let's go through oh, it. You know the two sticks, right? The two whales, the angle the of the shadow. Sticks. Uh, and the two whales or the two sticks, the angle yeah. of the shadow of the sticks. Yeah, we know everything about it. So, so you right, know all that, right? Your yeah, shadows are relative to the it. angle of the incoming light. So what's your next move? You went back around. Well, Things on the prove, ground. You prove it in the second way. You prove it in the second way to see if it lines up with the first way. And the way you can do it a second time is you can use the horizon and make a circle again on tall building. Measure the angle to the horizon. Draw a right angle to the bottom of the building, and then you can get an R value out of that. You Congratulations! Draw... You you just got the. You just figured out how the angular relations of the daylight works in relation to time and the position on the Earth. It's really nice. So how does that prove R? Well, because the two experiments match. So, how does that prove R? Well, you I mean, oh, I'd have to draw a diagram. No, you know, and you have to do us. a little bit of trigonometry. Tell us how it proves R. Because trigonometry is true. So, what are you applying the trigonometry to? To the to the Earth, right? What shape, what shape is the Earth? Trying... What shape is to the, the Earth? That so, you're to the angle of the light relative to the shadows on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, you, you relate it to a circle. You relate it to a circle, and you can get oh, an R value, R value out of that. So and you, you also can do it, like so I you said, get R, from the angle of the horizon. You get R. You can't get an R value if you assume it's an octagon, Nathan. Right, so you assume it's a sphere to get your R value, right? There's a lot of assuming it's a sphere going on here. It seems very bizarre that when we ask for scientific evidence, you explain that the first thing you do, the first step, is to assume it's a sphere, right? No, logically deduce the shape of the Earth. <laughs> logically deduce. Right, so your scientific evidence starts with a logical deduction. A man says, I logically deduce this is sphere. Let's start measuring stuff. Yeah. That's not scientific evidence of anything now, is it, Dick Brain? Hello? <laughs> yeah, do you understand why we've got an issue with this? Man with sticks in the ground makes logical deductions and says it's a sphere. Yeah, from that point... Alarm bells should be going off, but they're not. You're saying, well, we've got satellites and they use that value. Really? Well, that should also set off alarm bells, but it doesn't for you. It's How proof. should that set off alarm bells? <laughs> yeah. It should set off alarm bells for you, dude. Oh, right. Sorry. My bad. I should just accept some guy with sticks and shadows and his logical deduction, should I? No, you accept the object that you can see with your own eyes, Nathan. The yeah, satellite, the, the object that used that value to get into orbit. 
I should accept that the orbit used to get it up there, what you claim is rotating around a sphere Earth, the scientific evidence isn't scientific. It's a guy saying, if the Earth is a sphere, just like you do. And you logically deduce the shape of the Earth and then... You That's not what I asked. How many times have I got to say we haven't got any scientific evidence for it for you to reply with you logically deduce that it's a sphere? I couldn't give a well, crap you can't past what seven you miles on the or ocean Mr. Surface, Sticks Nathan. in the ground what other, logically what other... deduced. I'm not interested in logical deductions when I ask for scientific evidence. You won't... Uh, people will try to present before you stopped. You just told me that. You said people tried to present it. I asked what you got. Then you told me about sticks in the ground and shadows and logical deductions, didn't you? Yeah, logical deductions. Right, so not scientific evidence. Yeah. No physical uh, measurements. No, you don't need scientific evidence to prove everything on the face of the Earth. Yeah. Oh, really? So even though people come on this panel and tell us that the whole body of science is behind this, you don't need scientific evidence now, right? Let, let, what's next? Telling me that science doesn't prove anything? <laughs> Go for that. Yeah, I can logically deduce uh, that you're an you idiot. The... An orthodox. No, okay, yeah, you think rockets... So that's my scientific... Rockets can't fly like in me. space, yet that's the oldest known mathematical physics equation on the face of the planet. F equal MA doesn't, doesn't exist. Yeah. And rockets don't exist. There's a container on the Earth. Uh, oh, I'm the idiot. I'm oh, the idiot. Rockets exist, but they don't go into space. They just yeah. arc around so and then they go thing. into the ocean. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah I'm the idiot. Sure. No, no pressure. No, no pressure. No pressure. Major, major things going on in your head there, you, buddy. You can't you can't build a house on a foundation that you guessed at. It won't. No, work. you can't. Exactly. That's my point with the satellite. <laughs> right. So that's the thing. See, but what you're saying is there is these satellites on a foundation that doesn't work. So therefore, the foundation doesn't need to work. Do what now? No, I'm saying the foundation does work. That's why the satellite stays up. No, no, the foundation no. What you're is saying assumption. is the, the satellite is up there, so I don't need the foundation to work because we're trying to ask you, how does your foundation work? And you're saying the satellite is up there, so therefore the foundation works. So therefore, how does the satellite prove the foundation works? That makes no sense. That's like looking at a chimney and proving that the uh, house is not built on sand. No, I that's like looking at a chimney. Is suspending yeah. his house by his satellite, and that is his foundation. No, if you have Just a house that's on built, a satellite there. physically there in the real world, you know that the steps used to build it are true because it's there. They don't. It's an affirming the consequent. It's a formal logical fallacy. If I see dots in the sky, then the Earth is a sphere. I see dots in the sky, therefore the Earth is a sphere. You see dots in the sky. It's all an illusion anyway, so... You're right, you're saying just, I mean, we live in a simulation, so I don't really know what we're doing. Solopsism. Solopsism. Nice, isn't it? If I, if nice, I did an experiment it? to prove that rockets can can have, um, can have uh, propulsion in a vacuum, would you change your position? If I do an experiment to show that rockets yeah. actually have propulsion in yeah, a rock, in a vacuum... Show do us it. a rocket entering space and then returning to no, space. What, what? See, there we go again. We're off into something else when all we are asking is what is the foundation of the R value? I if just you told just, you guys, you could do it with no, the sticks, no, no, man. You, sticks and shadows, that's man. Not a, that's not scientific. No. But he doesn't, it, he doesn't, he doesn't way. That's okay to unorthodox. It doesn't matter. He doesn't want scientists. Something? He doesn't want science. No, for this. you can use he the independent assumption. variable. You just change your location. And the dependent variable would be the oh, angle of the shadows. Be a deduction. You've already decided that yeah, those that's how angles, we work in the real world. We're human you beings. Already know you know it. Ah, when you know that. get scientific <clears throat> proof. Unorthodox. Let me ask you a question real quick, okay? Okay. All right. If you let's go back to your um, explanation of angles and shadows. If you simply do the straight tri uh, trigonometry of measuring the distance to the horizon, if you just do the straight trigonometry. What result will you get? Um, well, do what now? Answer the question again. You if you're said, on a tall building and you look down at the at the uh, horizon, what angle will you get? Don't presume a ball. Don't a say anything. Disc don't instead. Say where, anything, where do you Arwen, Don't say anything, Arwen. Sorry. You just gave my joke away, man. Oh, sorry. I was. <laughs> you guys like jokes? Oh, no, man, I guess un un unorthodox. Joke. You're a joke. Seriously, I don't like seriously. you. Seriously. Oh. Unorthodox. I, yes, I'm asking yes. you simply to to practically apply what you just said about measuring 
distance and horizon. Just do that with straight trigonometry and give me your answer. I don't I don't know exactly what you're getting at. I don't know exactly what you want me to do. Yeah, we, we did this show like maybe two, three weeks ago about the uh, Muslim scientist. Yeah, there you go. That's the guy. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Do it without assuming the center of the earth and tell me what you get. Well, you want me to assume it's a, a tetrahedron or a triangle or a square? No, or I just octagon? want you to do trigonometry. Just do trigonometry. Well, I don't get have that set up right now. I can do it and present it on the next show. Yeah, get three points and come back to us. Okay, I will. I, I would like to ask y'all this about the container argument with the Earth and the pressure. So, if there's a, if there's a, if the Earth is contained, if there's a, you know, if there's a lid on the Earth and we drill out millions and millions and millions of gallons of petroleum and then we set that petroleum on fire in our cars and we produce billions and billions and billions of tons of co2 each year how come the pressure isn't increasing right so you would because, you would because when you combust something it actually burns up oxygen dumbass you can't burn, you can't you can't burn anything uh, Arwen, yeah, no matter it's a chemical reaction. One, well, it's still there. one set of components is transformed into another set of components, including. Uh, yeah, you're carbon. taking something that's liquid and turning into gas. What does that mean? Carbon. You're Smoke. taking something the question that's is liquid the... and turning into a gas, Arwen. What do you mean by you can't the burn question... anything? You just said you can't burn anything. What are you talking no, about? No, he said you the destroy the oxygen. Is... I'm saying, no, you can't destroy oxygen. The so question is. Find it. It didn't say destroy. The question is. The question is, does that explain what the R value is? That explanation that you just gave, no. does that explain the R value? So I told you, I don't have that ready to present at the moment. So there's, there's no really no point. The thing is, there's no point in going any farther because if right. you don't, don't have that. Well, this doesn't, we're not talking about R value anymore. I'm okay, okay then our conversation the is over. Just, just for the I'm audience's working. benefit, right? I'll shut up the hangout just for a second. We are definitely talking about the R value because that presupposition of an R value is where you've just claimed that this guy got R from. So he automatically assumed that it was a radius that he was going for. He automatically assumed the Earth was a sphere. Then he came out with his radius value. That was the plain truth's point. In other words, if you do the plain trick, you come out with a different result. You only come out with the result that you want, the spherical result, if you assume the sphere to begin with, which is exactly what they did. Sticks and shadows assumes the sphere. No, you logically deduced it, Nathan. No, you assumed it. That's what they did 2,000 years ago. No science involved. They just assumed. That was the starting point. The starting point was assumer on a sphere. I agree. No, logically deduced we're on a sphere. Okay, unorthodox, fine. Then do the math, get your three points, do the math, and show us how you logically infer from your solution the circumference. The radius. the radius. Okay. Well, if you have to present my screen, I've got the guy's experiment on here. No, we've already done that. We don't want. We want you to do it. You do it. You do want me this. to sit here and do calculations, but on the show? Not really. We don't want really want you to come back, really, because you keep bringing up the same stuff and then and then side railing with misdirection and air pressure when we want you to focus on your assumption. Well, we're not. Well, there's no more points to be made on this topic. I don't know why we're hammering it to death. I'd like to move on to something else. I'd, I'm sure you would love to move past R, yeah? Again, you don't seem to be listening. That's our point. You just want to accept it and move on and then claim everything with that as your foundation as proof no, no, of the foundation. Air pressure. That has nothing on the foundation of R. Right. Yeah, you assume that you've got a sphere that that air is attached to, don't you? Yes, Nathan, that's, that's totally uh, exactly what we're talking about. In, in relationship to the air pressure, the sticking point is the R value of the radius. Well, that's break, what you've got. It spins, right? Yeah, I could show you the Foucault's pendulum. I could do that experiment Sorry, on the show. No, no, no. The Foucault pendulum is not an experiment and proves nothing. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. So why are you giving us this circle jerk routine? Yeah, I agree with plain truth. I'm sick of having you here. Just come back with the same arguments and we debunk them every time. I'm trying to move on to something else, a new argument, and you guys won't let me. Yeah, because the whole point of this is a flat earth debate. And you're saying, no, 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 not flat earth, radius. And we go, really? Why? Well, because I say so. Let's move past no, this. No, because of, because of Al Bruni's scientific experiment and also... Uh... Al Bruni 
assumed it was a sphere. We just went through this. So what is your malfunction? We just went through this two minutes ago. Well, that's you all have I a so you have a malfunction. Same thing over and over again. You Do have what? a mal. You have a malfunction. Okay? What's my malfunction? You I'm just brought up Bal You just brought up Bal Rooney again. Why don't you tell us what we're problem? What our problem with Bal Rooney is? What is it? Um. Um, because they that you have to uh, first logically deduce the shape that you're on to then calculate it. Right. So basically, what you're saying is you already assume you're on a sphere. Or Al Baruni did. He logically deduced rather than just using the word assume. You obviously don't like the word assume. Yeah. So he made a logical deduction. Right. Yes. Right. That's not acceptable when we're asking for scientific evidence of things. What this guy logically deduced, I couldn't give a crap about. What he logically deduced was it's a sphere. And from that presupposition, he started measuring things. Yes. Well, that's the foundation of your argument. A presupposition, an assumption, a logical deduction. Well, that's the sticking point. You guys don't believe it's a logical deduction. And It is a logical deduction. You've just told us it was. We call it an assumption. An assumption that you're on a sphere. So your entire religion is based on Al Biruni's assumption, is it? Oh, well, that's wonderful no, for you. You moon. can tell us that we need to move on. We can say you've all got a religious belief. And according to this dick, it's based on Al Biruni's assumption that he was on a sphere. Unorthodox. Again, I'm going to yes. just simply, simply bring you back, okay? You like this stuff. You like to think about it. You like to talk about it. Go out, find three points, do straight trigonometry, and come back to us. We should be done. Let's move on. Don't bring up gas pressure. Don't bring up Foucault pendulum. We want you to do the trig and come back to us. Uh, you're not going to accept it. And we, we're okay, listen. Okay, okay, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. stop. No, no, everybody, just stop. Everybody stop, okay? Everybody you're stop. like talking to my eight-year-old when he says, Dad, you're not listening to me. And I said, no, I am listening to you. And I have assessed your explanation as invalid. That doesn't mean we just don't accept it. We're arguing with you about your presentation and saying it is invalid don't cry when we show that it's invalid now don't assume that we're going to do that hold on hold on hold on now don't borrow trouble by saying we're just going to cross our arms and reject it go do it come back and there's some of us who are honest will say wow you just proved it i'm now back on the globe side oh do yeah it. right i'm not gonna waste my time dude Okay, then stop wasting what are you hours. Doing, man? Stop wasting hours. Yeah, I'm... just go in your belief, be content in your belief in R that somebody assumed it for you at some point and then told you and based everything else on it. Just be happy in your belief. Accept your religion. It's not a religion, Nathan. Yeah, religion... it's based on an assumption. It's based on a belief. You just believe Al Biruni when he decided to assume the Earth was a sphere and then start making measurements. You've got a belief. I don't pray to the altar of low earth, Nathan. Yeah, hail Helios. Yeah, you've got people who have flung the very ground you stand on around the sun, even though you watch the sun move across the sky. Yeah, that's your religion. Yes. That's a belief. I can prove that the uh, earth is moving. I can prove that. <laughs> we Which know is... it's not moving. Wow, we, you're a heliocentrist. You think it is moving around the sun, idiot. So what's that going to prove? Our point that it doesn't move. Yeah, we already know. We already know it doesn't move. We already know there's no curve. Yeah, what, what what are you trying to prove? Our point. No, I'm saying I can prove to you that the Earth is moving. You just said you can prove it doesn't Here move. You. No, no, I can prove that the Earth is moving. How are you going to do that? You did uh, actually say it wasn't moving. That, that you could prove it wasn't. I, oh, I misspoke. I can prove that. I can prove that it's moving. Can, um, I, can, I, can I just interject here? Um, you know when you said it was said, why don't you do the trigonometry on the sun and then just do it based on a flat plane, right? Just trig, not not presupposing a sphere. Just trig. Do just you know why? Do you, do you know? Do you know why that was said? Uh, because you guys don't like the next step in the logical deduction. No, because it's already been done, and we know what the outcome is. Well, what's the outcome? Well, maybe that's what you should go and work out. I'm looking at Alberni's experiment right here. I got a document okay. pulled up that shows his, um, you know, what he did. Pretty ingenious, really. We're standing on the shoulders of giants, guys. You just guys just don't like the giants that stood before us. All right, yeah, Nathan, you I worship can prove those that giants. Moving, you I can worship prove those that. giants, don't you? You worship Al Biruni. Uh, he was a uh, you know intellectual giant. Sure, I mean uh, I don't worship intelligence, but I um, 
you know, I respect it. You believe it? You believe him? Uh, not just him, Nathan. It's everything else. It's the 20 other things. You not believe anybody him. else it's that agrees with him? Other things you believe well. anybody that agrees with him? Science? Not science. We've firmly established this is definitely not science. How many bloody times? This isn't science, mate. This is an assumption. <laughs> logical deductions, yeah? So anybody yeah, that agrees deductions. with Al Biruni's logical deduction, you think he's God. You think he's an intellectually superior, therefore is right. You believe him. No. You believe him. You believe yeah, him. Any reason. I mean, what uh, alternative motive could he have had? And so like, now you're questioning his motivation rather than accepting your belief. You have a belief. You believe him. Sure. Right. Yeah, I so you're telling me it's not a religious faith. It's not a belief system. But you just accept that it's a belief. You just said, sure, I accept what he says on belief, on trust, on faith. No, because he logically explains it and outlines it. <laughs> All right. Well, go down your local church and listen to how they logically explain stuff. And then just tell me they how you tell believe you to that do too. Experiments. They don't ask you. They don't like you asking questions. Science. Oh, no, they don't. Oh, yeah. really? We've just asked you for your scientific experiment and you don't have one. Now you're criticizing the church for not having science. Wow. Amazing. But Nathan, he's even today. wrong about that because in the church and I go there, they also tell you how you can prove to yourself that God actually exists. So they do actually do experiments, not scientific experiments, but they do actually make you prove it to yourself. Oh, that's, that's kind yeah. of, they're the odd man yeah. out. Yeah, just like yeah. your Just like your religion. Always exceptions, Arwen. Just I'm like talking. your religion. No scientific evidence of this stuff. Just belief. That's all you've got in orthodox belief. You believe Al Biruni. He assumed it was a sphere, and you believe him. Can I prove the Earth is moving and see what you guys have to say about that proof? It's yeah, it pretty... would have to be a sphere, though. We're How... starting with this. We keep going around this, right? You Having it spinning means yeah, it's not... a sphere, doesn't it? What? Having it spin means it's a sphere, doesn't it? No, not necessarily. No. Oh, right. No, it's not what I'm going to prove. No. Why I'm not just moving. I'm sorry. Why you, you can not prove it relative to mass and airship? Hold, hold on. What's the what's his name? He's trying to make a point. I was just going to say, why not just prove the R value instead? Why all the other things when all we're asking is because for? They don't is have R that value. ready right now. Well, then why keep and going? Then why keep? My point debate. is it, right, but the thing is, if you're having a debate and your foundation is not there, then what are you debating? Like I said, the the foundation was laid in the. Uh, satellite that was put up. The foundation has already been done over and over and over again. So no, it wasn't. They planned the trajectory based on Al Burundi and his assumption, Al Biruni and his assumption that the Earth was a sphere. Yeah. From there on in, everything's based on that foundation. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Well, you, you accept that on faith. You accept that because you yeah, believe. If they it. if they work, Nathan, that proves the foundation. No. That's called cool, begging the question. You've already assumed your outcome. Then you started making measurements. Then you get other people to confirm the measurements that use the presupposition. That is not proof. That's a begging the question fallacy. How many times? No. What do you yeah. mean? No, no is not an argument. Okay, well, I'll make an argument. If you have plans for a building so and you then construct the building, causation? are you proving the plans, that the plans work and the plans are true? And then you and then you gotta show evidence of the foundation of the building. Where was it built? That's what we're asking for. Where was it built? Like I said, I don't have all that ready to present right now. I could present it, but I, I've seen people present on your show before and you just dismiss it. Why so not? I don't really see no, the point. You've presented the same um, thing other people did and we dismissed it on the same merits that we dismissed yours on. You presented the same crap. The two thousand year old proof of the sphere hasn't changed for two thousand years. So all you have when you say, I'm not quite ready, well, hold on, we've had this for 2,000 years. You're telling me in 2,000 years, there's nothing you can refer to that's better than an assumption. That's the best you've got hey, in 2,000 years. You guys have years. had the flat earth for like 10,000 years, Nathan, and you have absolutely nothing. What do you mean we have nothing? We make the same measurements. The this is the point. You guys have had the flat earth model the for same long before the global earth model, and you, you guys have nothing. You're not listening. We make the same measurements as you. You add a presuppositional value of R. Ah, 
to the same Logical measurements deduction. we take. Don't you get it? Logical you're the deduction. one with the presupposition and you're saying you've got no proof of your presupposition. Well, your starting point with the measurements is the same as ours, you idiot. What, what starting point is the same as yours? The measurements. When we take measurements to anything we see in the distance, we start with the same measurements as you. You add a presuppositional value of R to the same no, exact... No, we add a logical... We logically deduce it. Logically. No, you insert it. How many times? We do the same as you. We make the same measurements you do. I don't have any presupposition, unless you want to claim that you've got two presuppositions when you insert R. You have the presuppositional flat earth... Uh, yeah, and so do you. You use the same measurements. Yeah? We both do the same thing. You add in R. Yeah, because we have physical objects in the real world based on that. No, you've got an assumption. Oh, you got physical objects. The satellite. You've got an assumption. Al Biruni assumed it. We've just gone through this and now you're telling us about other nonsense that will no doubt be based on a presupposition of an R value assumed by Al Biruni, who you trust and believe. If it works, it works, Nathan. You know. Yeah, if it works, if it works. Right, no. You started with the presupposition and then went forward making measurements. Confirming those measurements based on the presupposition doesn't prove a thing, you idiot. You don't get... Yes, it does. It proves that it works. It proves that it works, but it's based on a presupposition. It doesn't prove the assumption. If you had proof of the assumption, you'd present it. You can't because you don't. When you get back to the original source... You find out that it's just an assumption. I logical deduction. Can you concede, Onotos? Can you concede that all your globe spinning globe understanding is a is a base belief? You know, understanding. Uh, I would it's, say no it's, because it's based on belief and faith. He would say no, even though literally ten minutes ago he admitted that he just believes Al Biruni. He's confessed to this. You know, I can't be asked. He's not important enough to go away and get an edit and actually show this complete nonsense horseshit that he's doing right now. But basically, he's admitted it. He just believes Al Biruni. But now he's saying, no, it's not based on belief. Well, it is. He was talking generally speaking. You won't even let me answer. Not generally question. speaking, specifically speaking about the foundation. Ah. No, because you can. Not no. Yes. Ah. The radius. That's the debate. Are we on a sphere or not? What's your proof of it? Well, this guy just assumed it. No, the... Yes! That is what has happened. Why do you say no? Like you have some sort of argument by just disagreeing. Yes, Al Biruni just assumed it. You believe him. He logically deduced it. You can call it what you like. He didn't scientifically validate it, did he? Unorthodox. Yes. Here we are, okay? You and I are going to do the trigonometry. We're not going to come up with the same answer. Well, what do you do then? Here. What do you do then? Where do we go from there? Because well, we'd have to look at the your logical deduction and my logical deduction are not going to be the same. What do we do then? Then we look at other things like no, the no, no, like no, the sun, no, the moon. We go back to the, the same. We no, we go back to the same trigonometry. We work on the same problem. We don't add other problems. Because you know why? Your logical deduction on that problem and my logical deduction on that problem are not going to be the same. Okay? So don't add more problems. Stick to the one. And if you have a, a different logical deduction than I do, and, and we both are working the same problem, we have to stick with that problem. We don't live in a bubble. You know, we can assess other arguments that are in relation to this argument. No, to find you out are whether now your argument is true or my argument is true. You are now no, misdirecting. misdirecting. That's called conversation. You are now misdirecting. You're telling me that we can't use other objects in the world around Let me us ask you to, a question. to get an what? idea about this argument? Yeah. Why the bodies are not objects in this world? Why would we add another problem that I already know we're going to have? Uh, opposing conclusions to. Let's just stick with the one. Stick with the one, do your trigonometry, and do not logically deduce. Just do the math. Just do the math. Don't deduce anything because math is true. Math is right.
That's not okay? true. Now, but if yeah. you just do the math, you end up with off a triangle. With you. Off with you. Go away and come back when you've got your equation. I've got it right here. He's already told us. He just believed Al Biruni. So Al Biruni did this, but Al Biruni made the logical deduction that he was on a sphere, then made the measurements. Yes. Yeah, and you believe him. Uh, when the plane, when the plane through say Matt is true, Matt is right. You know he was being sarcastic, right? Do what now? Say that again. When the plain truth said, Matt is true, Matt is right, Matt is, 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 is what it is, he was being sarcastic. You know that, right? Yes, he because was. Because Matt can, well, you, no, you, you can begin yeah. Matt with a false axiom and, and, and everything go down the drain from there. Garbage in, yes, garbage that, out. that's true. That's true. Right, so but... when you make a logical deduction that you're on a sphere and then take all of your measurements based on that presupposition, if the presupposition is wrong, then you can have massive problems thereafter. But there's just so much evidence to logically deduce that you're on a sphere, Nathan. There's so yeah, much ev evidence that will lead you to that logical based deduction. Based on that presupposition, how many times have we got to go round this? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, I, I would argue... Yeah, now you're just stuttering. Yes, it's all based on the presupposition of R, which you're content to just believe because Al Biruni said so. No, I'm not content to believe it because Al Bruni said so. I'm content to believe it because of 20 other observations. Who so also presuppose R. Equinox, satellites, uh, the no, position no, no, of the no. equinox. The satellites got into quoted orbit, another presupposition, using R. What? They used R. We're trying to get yeah, to the root proves... source of the original claim that the Earth is a sphere. What's the foundation? You don't need that when you have the whole foundation. Yes, you do you? need it. Yeah, you do. If you're just going to say it just is, I logically deduce, that's not satisfactory. You can accept it and I believe it all you like. If you want to accept and believe what? Al Biruni's logical deduction, that's your bag. You believe whatever you want. Well, I don't really think it's a bag, though. That's what you guys never answered my question about. If the Earth was proved flat, what would happen? I'd like to know your your take on if the Earth was proved to be flat tomorrow. How would that change society? Yeah, it's going to be something going. interesting. Well, there would still be people around like you that just wouldn't take it anyway. Yeah, but you, you guys never let it go. You can never let go of your body. I'd like to move on to something interesting. We're not moving past any of these points. You know, no, it's because you so haven't got decent I'm not moving what past any of the points. I've kept the this going. I've kept, I've kept this tedium can we going. Stay with that? Because I've... if you think about it, you can't move past that just because it's not interesting. That doesn't work. You can't just declare, okay, well, I don't want to talk about that anymore. So let's just go and keep moving. You know what that's like doing? That's like building a house thinking that the foundation is going to fall in place. Yeah, but we have tons of houses out there that are already built, though. You're Please misdirecting right. again, unorthodox. Yep. You're doing exactly what I said two minutes ago. You are now. I don't think you got a good point, dude. Okay, well, go away. So you're saying that if. What, Slick James or Slick James? Uh, I thought it was what, I'm, what I'm saying is that are you saying that you can build a house and the foundation <laughs> will fall in place? No, I'm saying there's a bunch of houses out there already built, so we know the I know, foundation that's not will be what true. I, asked you. I didn't ask you that. I asked you, can you build a house? and the foundation fall in place, yes or no? Can you build a house and the foundation fall in place? You mean just yeah, kind of like ma magically, kind of like- y Yes, that's really what understand. I'm asking. Can that, that's what I'm asking. Can that happen, yes or no? I mean, sure, just about anything's possible. I guess it could- No, happen. the answer is happen. no. You have to plan the foundation. You have to build the foundation specifically for the house and then it will work. Yeah, yeah. Right. Generally speaking, yes, you're correct. No, not generally. Yes. Not not generally speaking. No, the answer is yes or no. So, are you saying that you can build a house and the foundation will fall in place? Yes or no? No. Okay, so Most that's what our, our, our this is what our argument is. What you're telling us, if I'm just to use an analogy, you're taking all of this stuff and saying that we built all of this stuff and because we built all of this stuff, it made the foundation. And that's what we're trying to explain to you, that we're not buying that. We want foundation first, not foundation second, because of the results of the assumption. 
And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you hated the show, you know precisely what to do. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you have not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!